Isaiah 61 and 10. It says, I will greatly rejoice. Why? In the Lord, my soul shall be joyful in my God. For he has clothed me, my God, with the garment of salvation. Why not praise him if we have this garment of salvation upon us? God has given us the garment of salvation. Huh? He has what? He has covered us with the robe of righteousness. We have a right to praise him, saints. Huh? As a bridegroom decked himself with an ornament and as a bride adorned herself with her jewels. Saints, we have a right to praise him. With the garment of salvation and the robe of righteousness, we have right, godly right, hallelujah, holy right, to lift up our hands and Lord, we thank you for the garment of salvation. Hallelujah, we thank you for the robe of righteousness. It's not our robe, but his robe, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. And the God has given us the garment of praise. We have all right now the garment of praise. God has blessed us with all these precious gifts. Saints, do remember that God has blessed you. He has blessed you. Lift him up. Praise him. Magnify him. God called you for, for you to worship him in spirit and in truth. He said, I made you, I create you for myself, by myself, for praise and glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have got to press ourselves. We got to press, saints. We got to travel before God. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. The Lord, fill my cup. Lift up your hands. The Lord, fill my cup. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up. Come and quench the thirst of my soul and my spirit. My spirit needs to be filled up. Oh, Lord, my spirit, my soul cries out. Fill me, oh, God. I need a, oh, God, I need, need a renewing of the spirit this morning. Saints, don't let us leave this place without our spirit being renewed and our soul being charged with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Come on, saints. Don't let pride hinder you. Push back pride. Push back pride. Pride. Push it back. Come on. Push back pride. Don't let pride stand in your way. Come on. Let boldness stand up. God will give you boldness this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, we got to get a breakthrough in this place. Oh, hallelujah. Breakthrough is here. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Let the heavens hear your voice. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel like praising him because good. Hallelujah. Through, oh God, the trials. Through, oh God, the test. Through affliction. He's good. Hallelujah. He's good. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Which strengtheneth me. How many of you believe that this morning? Amen. Amen. We can live this Christian life in the midst of a perverted generation. But we can't do it on our own. We got to do it through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to the book of 2 John. The book of 2 John. Everybody ready to listen this morning? Praise God. The book of Second John, beginning at verse one, the elder uh-huh. unto the elect lady. Somebody say the church. Jesus ain't marrying no man. Amen. <laughs> he 
He's marrying a bride. That's the way it should be. Keep coming for me, elder. And her children, uh -huh. whom I love in the truth. Who I love in the truth. Somebody say truth. When you read the Apostle John's writings, especially his epistles, his focus is love and truth. Love and truth. Love and truth. We need that desperately in this generation. True love, not false love. True love and truth. Amen. I'll get a little bit more into it. Keep coming for me, Elder. And not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. Uh-huh. For the truth's sake, which d dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. Shall be with us for how long? Forever. No matter how corrupt modern Christianity gets, it'll never be corrupted to the extent that truth doesn't abide with us. What I'm saying is no matter how corrupt the world gets, no matter how corrupted preachers get, no matter how corrupted the church gets, they can never be corrupted to the extent that people who love God and want truth won't be able to find it. Amen. Because John said the truth which is in us and is with us will be with us for how long? Forever. If you're of truth, if you love truth, if you want truth, Truth will always be with you. Truth will always be in you. However, if you don't want it, then you won't have it. Amen? Somebody say truth. Truth. Keep coming, elder. Grace be with you. Uh -huh. Mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, uh -huh. in truth and love. Somebody say truth. Truth. And somebody say love. Love. You can't emphasize love without emphasizing truth. It's impossible because a true love of God causes you to work truth. You can't love God and live a lie. Amen? Amen. He's the true God. You can't serve him and be serving a lie. Amen? Amen. Everything you do for God has got to be out of your love for God. But your love for God will cause you to live truth. Keep reading. You'll see it. I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth. I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children what? Walking in truth. Listen, if you're feeling depressed, you might have your priorities out of order. Because if you know somebody that you care about is walking in truth, that should cause you to automatically rejoice. It caused John to rejoice. You might have a lot of things to be down about, but when you look at somebody and you see they're receiving truth, they're growing in truth, they're loving truth, they're living truth, that should bring joy to your spirit. Yes. It's no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. If you love truth, it'll make you happy when somebody receives it. Amen? Somebody say this treasure. treasure. I want somebody to find this treasure. It's a good place to say amen. Amen. Keep coming for me, elder. As we have received a commandment from the Father. As we have received, somebody say commandment. Commandment. All this love that he's talking about, truth and commandment. You can't have love without truth and commandments. Keep coming for me, elder. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I write a new commandment unto thee. Everybody wants something new. You just need to go back to what's been written. Amen. What's already been spoken. It's a shame that everything that's new is contradicting what spirit spoke a long time ago. He ain't trying to give us a new commandment. He just wants us to believe what Jesus said. Amen. 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 Come on, elder. But that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. Somebody say love. Love. Keep coming for me, elder. And this is love. So we got to love one another. And this is love. In case you weren't sure, he's going to tell you what love is. Read for me. That we walk after his commandments. Hold up. <laughs> this is love. That we do what he said we should do. Amen. I love God. I just don't want to do that. Well, you don't love God. Stop lying to yourself. 
True, true. Yes, sir. If you love God, the Bible defines love as this, that you keep his commandments. If you're not keeping his commandments, there's no way that you love God. You can say you love God. Yes, sir. But love ain't words. No, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. If you love me, you better be committed to me. Amen. Amen. Mess around and get divorced, get put away. Ask Israel. Keep coming for me, elder. This is the commandment Uh that as ye have heard from the beginning. From the when? Heard from the beginning. Amen. Ye should walk in it. Okay. For many deceivers are entered into the world Uh who confess not that Jesus Christ is come into the flesh. So in the flesh, many deceivers have came where? Into Into the the world. world. And what are they doing? They confess not that that, what? That Jesus Christ is come. in. These deceivers are not confessing that Jesus never came. They're just preaching. That when he came, he wasn't flesh. That's right. They're not saying that Jesus didn't come. They're saying that he came, but when he came, he wasn't what the apostles said he was. He wasn't what he said he was. That's right. They have a different revelation of Jesus than Jesus preached about himself. Than the apostles preached concerning Christ. Amen. But they're not preaching that Jesus never came. See, the lie is people believing, oh, well, they put faith in Jesus. So as long as you believe in Jesus, you're okay. False. Because here John is addressing a group called the Gnostics. They never preached that Jesus didn't come. They preached that he came. But when he came, he was not an actual human being. You follow me? So John didn't say, watch out for people who say Jesus never came. We know better than to listen to people that say Jesus never existed. The people you got to watch out for are the ones that preach Jesus. But preach a different one. Yes, sir. So he came But what was he while he was here? We know what he is now because the scriptures tell us flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's why Jesus had to be glorified. He had to be changed from flesh to spirit to enter into the kingdom. But what was he prior to his death? Keep reading for me, Elder. This... Is a deceiver and an antichrist. Now, listen, antichrist ain't even somebody that says Jesus never came. Antichrist is someone that says he came, but wasn't a man. Why? Let me wait before I get into that. Keep coming for me, Elder. Look to yourselves. Look to who? Yourselves. Stop looking to everybody else to keep your salvation. At some point, you got to look in the mirror Amen. and look to yourself. God can't even keep your salvation for you because he don't make your decisions. Hallelujah. He don't choose who you hang out with. He don't choose what you do in your recreation time. He don't make your decisions for you. You got to look to yourself. Why, elder? That we lose not those things which we have wrought but that we receive a full reward. That we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a what? A full reward. Somebody say, I got some responsibility in this. I got some responsibility. Look at your neighbor. Tell him you got some responsibility in this. You got some responsibility. We got treasure in an earthen vessel, and if you don't want to lose it, you got to look to yourself. You got to guard your treasure. Amen? Amen. Keep coming for me, elder. Whosoever transgresseth, Uh uh-huh, and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ. The doctrine of who? Christ. If you don't abide in Christ's doctrine, it's sin. Amen. Whosoever transgresseth, whosoever sins and abides not in the doctrine of Christ. The apostles telling us to not have Christ's doctrine is to live in sin. 
Amen. 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 Whosoever transgresseth, transgresseth, tough word, and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. Hath what? Not God. You can't be saved. You can't know God. You can't live right and not have Christ's doctrine. Absolutely. Let's just call it what it is. You can't be a Christian and not follow Christ. You can't claim you follow Christ and not abide in his teachings. Yes, sir. Whosoever abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. Okay. Keep coming. He that abided in the doctrine of Christ, Uh he hath both the father and the son. Both. The father. When you abide in Christ's doctrine, you don't just have one. Both. When you abide in Christ's doctrine, you don't have three. Both. When you abide in Christ's doctrine, you have both the Father and his son, Jesus. Amen? Amen. Keep coming for me, Elder. If there come any of any unto you and bring not this doctrine. This doctrine. Receive him not into your house. Neither bid him Godspeed. Don't even say God bless you. Because if you abide not in the doctrine of Christ, you don't have God. They got baptism in Jesus' name. They got infilling of the Holy Ghost. Good. That's two doctrines of many that Christ preached. The goal is to abide in Christ's doctrine. Why does the enemy desire to corrupt people from believing that Jesus was a genuine human being. So number one question, amen. Why would they want you to believe that Jesus was not truly flesh? Why did the Gnostics preach that Jesus wasn't truly flesh? Because their doctrine said that you could live however you wanted to in the flesh. You could sin in the flesh and it would not affect your relationship with God. So in order to justify their doctrine, they needed Jesus not to be a human being. Because if he was a human being and he lived above sin then that meant they as human beings could not do whatever they wanted in their flesh and still be saved. Amen. That's right. The driving force behind the doctrine that preaches that Jesus is not a genuine man is to give you an excuse as to why you can sin. Yes, sir. Because the standard that you'll be judged by is Jesus. According to Romans 2 and 16, Who in that day God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the standard by which you'll be judged. So if he's a man and you need an excuse, the best thing you can do is just preach that he's not merely a man. He's also part God. Give me Hebrews chapter 2. Yes, sir. What does the Bible say concerning Jesus? Y'all still with me? Yes, sir. What was Jesus? What was he made up of? And how much like us was he? Y'all, I don't even have to teach right now. Y'all already saying all the right answers. Hebrews 2 and 5. For unto the angels had he not put in subjection the world give to me, come. Give me Hebrews 2 and 4. God also bearing them witness. Speaking of the apostles. Mm-hmm, both with signs and wonders uh-huh. and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Amen. For unto the angels had he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak. Scripture didn't say angels would have dominion in the world to come. 
The scripture says, know ye not that ye shall judge the angels. Amen. 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 It is the plan of God that humanity should rule and reign over the earth. Yes, sir. Because that's how he created it to be in the garden. What were Adam and Eve when they were created? Human beings. Mankind, because it was God's intention that mankind rules over the earth. Amen. Keep coming for me, Elder. For unto the angels had he not put, let me repeat that yeah, you again. Got it. For unto the angels had he not put in subjection the world to come, uh-huh. whereof we speak. But one in a certain place testified, saying, what is man? What is who? What is man? Uh-huh. That thou art mindful of him. Somebody say man. Man. Amen. Or the son of man that thou visitest Or him. the what? Son of man. God said he is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. God is not the son of man. God visits the son of man. Amen. Why do you think the son of man went to pray by himself at night? Because he had a visit coming from God. Yes. That's why the one time he took Peter, James, and John with him up to the mountain to pray, what happened? The glory of God showed up. Elijah and Moses joined them and they heard a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son. Hear him. God visits the son of man. Keep coming for me, elder. Thou madest him a little lower than thou the madest angel. him. What? A little lower. A little what? Lower. Wait a minute. A little lower. Thou God madest him Christ. A little what? Lower. Hold on, because Hebrews chapter one and verse four, speaking of Jesus, says being made so much better than the angels. See, when Christ was first created, he was made lower than the angels. But when Christ conquered death and was risen from the dead, he was given all power in heaven and earth. And at that point, he was made so much better than the angels. Amen. Because he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Amen. At the resurrection, Christ received an inheritance from God, which was all power in heaven and earth. And his inheritance gives him a greater position than the angels. Amen. But he didn't have that position from birth because when he was born, he was made a little lower Lower than the angels. angels. Is God lower than the angels? God's lower than nothing. So when Christ was made, he was not made having divinity in him because if he had divinity in him, he would not be made lower than anything. Nevertheless, the scripture says he was made lower than the angels. Right. Keep coming for me, Elder. Thou crownest him with glory Thou, and honor. Thou, God, crownest him, Christ, with glory and honor. Amen. Keep coming. And did set him over the works of thine hands. Hallelujah. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. Amen. For in that ye put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. Somebody say praise Jesus. King Jesus. Amen. Keep coming for me, Elder. But now we see not yet all things put under him. Not everything has been put in subjection to Christ. Because death hasn't been done away with yet. Amen. Yes, sir. But when death is dealt with, when death is done away, and death and hell are cast into the lake of fire, then even the son himself will be made subject. That's right. Unto the one that put all things in subjection under his feet. Amen. 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 I don't want to get too deep. We just kind of get deep around here in case you haven't noticed. Amen. Amen. Keep coming for me, Elder. But we see Jesus. But we see Jesus. Hallelujah. Who was made a little lower than the angels. Hold on. When he was what? Made. Somebody say made. Made. If you are made, that means that you did not exist prior to being made. Amen. To be made means you are created. Absolutely. Book of Revelation calls Jesus the beginning of the creation of God. Before God created anything, he planned that he would have a Messiah and that the lamb would be slain from the foundation of the earth. But it don't call him the creator. It calls him the created. Amen. Says he's made by God. 
For it is God that hath made all things. Amen. By himself. Stretched forth the heavens alone and created the earth by himself, according to Isaiah. Yes, sir. 44 and 24. Keep coming for me, Elder. We'll read it again. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels uh-huh. for the suffering of death. For the what? The suffering of death. So why was it necessary that Jesus be made lower than the angels? The suffering of death. Because God needed to conquer death. But the problem is, according to the scriptures, 1 Timothy 1 and 17, he only hath immortality. So if he cannot die, you follow me? Then he is not a rightful candidate to be the Messiah. Because the Messiah has to be able to die in order to deliver us from the bondage of death. Amen. Amen. So God, who was higher than all, needed to make it Christ, who was lower than angels. For what, elder? For the suffering of death. Because he had to die. He had to be tempted. But God cannot be tempted. No. Therefore, God does not qualify as a candidate to be the Messiah. Because the Messiah had to beat temptation and had to beat death. Keep coming for me, elder. Crowned with glory and honor. Hallelujah. That ye, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Hallelujah. For every man. God needed a man, so he made one. Keep coming, elder. For it became him for whom are all things Uh and by whom are all things Uh in bringing many sons unto glory. Many. Hallelujah. Somebody say, that's me. That's Keep coming, me. elder. To make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Wait. To make the captain of their salvation perfect. So Jesus was perfect. But he's lower than the angels. I mean, even the angels are capable of sinning. Yes, sir. And he was made lower than the angels. What's that tell you about how capable he was of sinning? That's why Romans chapter 8, verses 3 and 4 says God sent forth his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Christ's flesh was highly capable of sinning. But what makes his life so special, what makes his life so unique is that he chose to deny his will. He chose to deny his flesh, which was the likeness of sinful flesh, be obedient to the spirit, even to the point of death in death of a cross. He was perfect, saints. In him was no sin. In him was no guile. Praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Keep coming for me, elder. For both he that sanctifieth. He that. Both he that sanctifieth. Uh-huh. And they who are sanctified. Uh-huh. Are all of one. Why? For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Why is Jesus calling us brethren? Because he's one of us. Amen. Amen. Keep coming for me, elder. <laughs> Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. Christ said, I will declare thy, thy name. name, Yahweh, unto my brethren. Keep coming. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. Hallelujah. And again, I will put my trust in him. Uh-huh. And again, behold, I the, and the children which God had given me. Amen. So he's a child, but he's got some children. Given. Thine they were, but thou gavest them yes. me. Yes, Read sir. John 17 when you get some. The whole Bible just makes sense now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this. Can I get it? You can give God a hand clap of praise. But I don't read anything in the scripture these days and think that really doesn't fit what I believe. Praise be to God. Through Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. We thank him for a spirit of truth. Amen. Amen. Keep reading for me, elder. For as much then as the children are partakers. For as much then as the children are partakers, partakers of, of flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. Okay. 
he also Christ also himself likewise took part of the same of the same Christ took part of the same so if Christ was the same and through the spirit Christ could be made perfect what does that mean for us but if I just want to do whatever I want to do all I need to do is change who Christ was that way we can just go around doing whatever we want to do People don't want the revelation of who Jesus was. Amen. That's right. See, what they want to do is cause Jesus. See, God said he made him lower. So what man wants to do is make him higher. So they don't have to do what he did. See, man wanted Christ to be exalted before he paid the price to be exalted. That's why Jesus fled from the Jews because they were desiring to make him a king prior to him taking it to the cross. Jesus knew you can't be exalted unless you first humble yourself. So God made him lower. And what did he do? He humbled himself to death, even death of a cross. So then after he denied his flesh, after he maintained perfection, then God exalted him. And gave him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, whether things on earth or things in heaven or things under the earth, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. But Jesus did not get that exaltation because he was God. He got the exaltation because he was faithful. Unto death. Amen. He righted all of Adam's wrongs. That's what God needed. Someone to right all of Adam's wrongs. That's who the Lord Jesus Christ is. Hallelujah. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb of God that was slain. Amen. I thank God for Jesus. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. There's, when, when you get some time, just go through and read Hebrews 2 on your own. Meditate on it. Uh, just go ahead. Keep on going. Keep on going. That through death, uh-huh. he might destroy him that had the power over death. He might destroy him. Somebody say destroy. Destroy who, who was him that had the power over death? Keep reading for me, Elder. That is the devil. Hallelujah. You can't blame the devil no more. Hallelujah. Because the devil's been defeated. That's right. We got to look to ourselves to see to it that we lose not those things which we have wrought. Keep coming for me, Elder. And deliver them who through the fear of death were uh-huh. all their lifetime subject to bondage. Hallelujah. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, Amen. but he took on him the seed of Abraham. He was a Jew. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, <laughs> that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself had suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. (laughs) He is able to secure them that are tempted. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I thank God for truth. Man, I feel the anointing right now. He's able. We got to believe he's able. People don't want to believe that God is able. People don't want to believe that Christ is able. Now unto him that is worthy and is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory. 
God is able. He's able to do more than just pay your bills. He's able to do more than just provide for you. He's able to keep you from the world. He's able to keep you from the flesh. He's able to keep you from death. Keep you from bondage. He's able, saints. Real fast, go to Acts chapter 14. Yes, sir. This whole... Co- Are y'all still with me this morning? Yes, sir. We can be like Jesus, saints. Would somebody just say that I can be like Jesus? I can be like Jesus. I can be like Jesus. I can be like Jesus. See, it wasn't until the gospel started being preached into Gentile civilization and Gentile countries that they started mixing Gentile ideas in with the gospel. Amen? Amen. Because the Jews... They had they weren't looking at Jesus thinking he was God. They were looking at Jesus thinking he was that prophet that should come into the world. They were looking at Jesus. Like he was a great man. But they didn't believe he was Yahweh. Why? Because Jesus never said he was Yahweh. Because when they came to Jesus and said, oh, good master, Jesus said, why callest thou me good? There's none good but one, and that is God. He didn't claim he was God. He claimed he was the son of God. And if he's the son of God. Then as many as did put faith in him or did believe in him. Hath God given power to become the sons of God? Amen. We can be what he was. But once the gospel began to be preached in these non-Jewish regions, they began to mix Gentile pagan doctrine with the gospel and started birthing ideas like the Trinity. Why is the Trinity never mentioned in the Bible? Why don't the apostles greet you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, and the Holy Ghost, the third person of the Trinity? Yeah. Because they didn't believe that. They were Jews. Jews believed, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. Jesus taught the same thing as being the greatest commandment. Mark 12 and 28. Jesus, what's the most important of all the commandments? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. They knew there was no such thing as a trinity, and they knew that Jesus was not God. He is the promised Messiah. Amen. That's the message of the scriptures. But once the gospel began to be taken outside of Jerusalem, that's when they began to mix their ideas with the gospel. Acts 14, verse 8. Notice this. And there sat a certain man at Lystra. Okay, this is Paul and Silas preaching. And there sat a certain man at Lystra. Okay. Impotent in his feet. Not able to walk. Being a cripple from his mother's womb. Okay. Who never had walked. Never. Somebody say never. Never. Keep coming for me, Elder. The same heard Paul speak. Uh Uh-huh. Who steadfastly behold in him and perceiving that he had faith to be to be healed uh-huh. said with a loud voice stand upright on thy feet Hallelujah. and he leaped and walked somebody say thank you Jesus he walked okay keep coming and when the people saw what Paul had done they when li- they saw this miracle that just took place they did what lifted up their voices saying in the speech of Lyconia uh huh The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. Hold on. When they did this, when they performed a miracle, the Gentiles said, oh my goodness, men don't do things like this. So this can't be a man doing this, but rather the gods have come down in the likeness of men. Incarnation. See, Jews had no concepts that the gods would come down in the likeness of men. What is the Trinity teach? 
that God the Son, one of three persons of God, came down and took on the likeness of men. Yes. They say, well, how could Jesus have performed those miracles that he performed except he be God? Can I tell you that the scriptures are adamant that it's not that he was God, but the scriptures teach us that he was a man approved of God who did many signs and wonders, which God did by him. Amen. God was doing the signs and wonders through him. God empowered him. And just as God empowered him, he can empower us. That's why Jesus said greater works than these shall you do. That's right. As my father has sent me, even send I you into the world. Amen. So once the gospel got into these Gentile regions, these people wanted to intermingle their Gentile religion with the gospel. Which says, well, men don't heal people. So he couldn't have just been a man. He must be a God who came down in the likeness of men. Notice what Paul goes on to say. And they call Barnabas Jupiter uh-huh. and Paul Mercurius uh-huh. because he was the chief speaker. Uh-huh. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people. Yep. Which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people crying out and saying, sirs. Why do ye these things? Uh We also are men of like passion with you Uh and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities Uh unto the living God. You got to turn from this pagan worship. You got to turn from these pagan ideas. I think the same thing needs to be preached to the church on this day and this time. Amen. Because these same pagan ideas have infiltrated the church to the extent that they don't even preach Jesus was a genuine man, just like everybody else in the Bible preached. Rather, they have Greek mythology intermingled with Christianity, that Jesus is some type of new Hercules, half man, half God. Just like Paul, we stand before everybody and say, you got to turn from these vanities. We got to turn from these concepts and serve the true and living God, saints. Jesus was a genuine man, just like you, just like me. And what he was in the flesh is what we can be through God's spirit. Help me pray. God, we love you. We thank you for this precious truth, Heavenly Father. I pray, Lord God, that we would love this truth, that we would be grateful for this truth. God, I praise you, Father. I praise you, Heavenly Father, that I no longer have to read through my Bible and be confused or wonder, am I believing the right thing? Is what I'm saying truth? God, I thank you for the peace of mind that you have given me with this revelation, with this precious treasure that you have given us, God. But I pray that it be more than just a head knowledge, that I would apply, God, every principle, walking in the Spirit, being obedient to the Spirit, understanding, God, that I can live even as Christ lived, for he was my perfect example, for he was the first firstborn of many brethren. God, I understand that it is your perfect will that many brethren should follow suit and should live even to the extent that Jesus lived. For as many as you call, God, you justified and as many as you justified, you will glorify heavenly father. And I praise you for your perfect plan, God. I praise you for your perfect plan, God. I praise you, heavenly father. For you are Yahweh, the Lord God Almighty. For you are one, and your name is one, God. For there is but one of you. There's one God and one mediator between us and you, the man Christ Jesus. And I praise you for the Lord Jesus Christ. I praise you for that mediator, God. Hallelujah. Just glorify him if you're thankful. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so grateful. That is so rich. That is so rich. It's worthy to bless his holy name to know 
that we can attain this same light perfection, walking sinless before him in the spirit through Christ Jesus has given unto us, that God has given unto us. And it's amazing. And what I want to do, we can't thank him enough, by the way, for what God has already done thus far. Amen. And to add just a word of exaltation, 2 Corinthians 13, starting with verse 4. Because now that we have received this, there always will remain the question for us to do at this particular time. I believe verse 4 says that for though we, for though he, speaking of Christ Jesus here, was crucified through weakness, yet the li- let yet he live it by how the power of God. So if Christ, as he spoke through Elder Jacques, showing that that was a was a man, a flesh and blood that God appointed, that God approved by the Spirit working in him, with him, raised him up from the dead. Now he's telling us now, for we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him. How? It is by the spirit that we live, move, and have our means. Next verse. Because of this, we now have a choice to make. That every man should now. Because none of us can live this life by ourselves. And obviously, by the fruit of what we have received, is the direct expression of whose side we actually have chose. Do you choose to walk in the spirit or you chose the flesh? Because either way, it will show. Call a spade as it is. Let white be white, let black be black. Might as well just, don't try to say, well, that's grayish, dark gray, blue. No, it's either it's white or it's black. We now are called to be examined. So we now, we examine ourselves. Whether... Ye be in the faith. Do we believe the doctrine of Jesus Christ or not? Because if we believe this and are in the faith, then we must abide by the rules and the regulation of that faith. That if we love Christ, as it was said, we keep his commandments. Not only that, we got to prove your own selves. And you have to know, know ye not your own self, how that Jesus Christ is in you. We all have that responsibility. Except if you don't, what are we going to be? We always have a choice. Always have a choice. From the beginning, the spirit and the wisdom of God always gives us choices. Have you noticed? Adam was created. He gave Adam a choice. What he should and should not do. Obviously, Adam made a choice and went against God. He said, if you do this, you shall surely die, right? He died immediately. It's twofold. Spiritually, he died immediately. Naturally, he go through a, a, a process of death, naturally. So that which was meant for dominion and rule turned out to be death and curse. Thorns and briars come out of it. And then we have Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. When he was tempted... He said, he's praying that I don't want to go through this. Nevertheless, not my will. But thy will be done. And the natural man died. But eternally, that spirit, he was highly exalted. You see the difference between the two gardens? A choice. You have Cain and Abel. One offered a sacrifice. That God wanted. The other just gave what you want. God accepted one and rejected the other. And the result. The evil one killed the good one. The choice he made. 
You have two sons that came from Rebekah called Jacob and Esau. Before the childs were born, he said, there's two nations in your womb. And the younger is going to serve the older. Huh. We know how the whole thing happened. Jacob, which name is turned to be a con artist, a, a con man who just tricked his trickster, turned and had his name changed from Jacob to Israel because of a choice he made. We, we, the choices. Now we have Jesus came and give us the two foundations. One who build his house upon the rock versus one who builds his house upon the sand. We have these foundations. We all have a choice. Let's make that choice. Let's really examine ourselves. Now I say all this to say this in verse 6. Because we must know where we stand. And he's hoping, that's what Paul was saying to them. After he tell them to examine themselves, he's saying, but I, I trust that ye shall know that we are what? So if we are not, then we have to continue and abide walking in the spirit. Verse 7. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil. Not that we should appear approved. But that ye should do that which is honest. Though we be as Reprobate, reprobates according to this world. Next verse. For we can do what? Let me tell you. As it was stated already through Elder, uh, Elder Jacques, when it comes to the truth, if you're seeking for it, we can do nothing against the truth but for it. For those that are hungry and seeking for truth, you're sick and tired of it, you want to do God's will, you will find truth because that spirit will always lead you. I don't care how much mistakes you made. When you're sick and tired, I say, no, I'm going to do it your way, Lord. What to do? I don't understand the word. I don't know how to pray, but I want to do it your way. He will lead you. He will guide you. Because we can't do nothing against it. That's what they've been doing. That's what evil calls us. That's the difference between lie and the truth. Because if, if, if Christ is of the truth, no matter what evil comes against it, truth will always reign. We have this hope in us. We cannot fail if you stay in the truth. We have an arsenal that's beyond the thinking of man. Some of us, it goes beyond our knowledge. We have an outfit that we put on when men get ready to go to war. When we get ready to go to war, we put on our priestly duties. When we put on the armor of God in love and truth and righteousness, we are more geared up to do the will of God at any given time, anywhere, because we go beyond what we can see. We walk in the spirit. See what we have in the spirit. There's much to behold in the spirit. Eyes have not seen. What is prepared for you? Ears have not Heard, you have not heard it yet to the totality. Neither have it entered into our hearts yet the things that God has set before us. In, oh, hallelujah, in heavenly places. This is not our home. This is, this is not our home. This is not our home. This is not your home. I don't care if you have business or homes or whatever. This is not, it's going to go away. We make a change. We got to make that choice because what we're making it for is unto righteousness and holiness. And every tear that you cry, every frustration you go through, when you hold on to the truth unto the end, you will know why he will wipe the tears out of your eyes. Examine yourselves. We have more. That we can't see that's with us than that which we can see. 
we have all that he has given us access into heavenly places. You are not distraught. You are not broken. In Christ, you have it. Just let the spirit of God take you there in its due season. You will reap if you fail not. Please take hold of these words. These are not man's words. Our mouth is open unto you. Know your worth in the spirit. Know your worth in God. Walk in it. Verse 9. And I'm done. For, for, for we are glad that when we are weak and ye are strong. And this also we wish that you continue even to your perfection it's all of us got to be on the same page for the perfecting of the saints <laughs> oh my god <laughs> meditate meditate on these Let us stand together, if you will, and and spend a few moments right here thanking God for these treasures that have been given to us in his word today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that has been imparted into us through your servants today to teach us, Father, the treasures, the riches of knowledge and understanding and wisdom and revelation according to, to the principles of your word. We thank you, Father, and we receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save our souls. For we know that you are perfecting us today through your word, God, both through tongues and interpretation and through teaching today. And we receive it, Father, as it should be received, not the word of men, but your word, Father, that washes and purges and perfects us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we give you praise and glory and honor for your perfect word. Um, before service, I shared with uh, Bishop a vision uh, that I had on Friday morning. Um, some of us who pray usually in the morning, um, every morning we've been doing it now for the past two weeks. I thank God for that. Um, during prayer on Friday morning, I got a vision. During prayer, um, and just work with me, just bear with me. The first thing I saw um, that God showed me was a, a grindstone. Not sure if everyone knows what a grindstone actually is. Um, in older times, a man would sit down at this thing. It was like a wood, uh, a, a rock, a wheel made out of rock, in which they would put metal on to sharpen um, a thing. Um, and then the vision opened up more, and I saw many, many men. Um, and one by one, the man would walk up to the grindstone. And beside the grindstone, there was a, a bucket, and the bucket had a lot of swords in it. Um, and one by one, this is, this is basically what happened. The man would walk up. And I, I looked at all the men, and all the men were armored. They were, it seemed as if they were ready to go to battle. They were ready to go to war. But all the men would go up to the bucket of of swords and grab one, sit at the grindstone, and then they would begin to sharpen the sword. Um, And then the vision opened up more, and I was able to turn around, and I saw a throne. Um, But no one was sitting in the throne. Immediately, I knew that was God. And um, the men would grind, would, would, of course, sharpen the swords. And then the man would walk up before the throne. And take the sword, hold it up, and then he would stab himself. And the first man I saw do it, he stabbed himself, and he fell to the floor. He died, and he didn't get up. And this was just a, it was a succession after that. Each man would come up, grab a sword, sharpen it at the grindstone, come up before the throne, stab himself. And it kind of, it, it seemed as if it was like, the, the feeling that I got from it, I don't like using the word, but ritual. 
it seemed as if they had to prove that they could withstand because I saw many men on the floor, and many men didn't get up after they stabbed themselves. But very few, a man would stab himself, and he would fall to his knee, as of course grimacing. But he would stand back up, and then he would walk, he would walk to the side. And it kept going until it went through all the men. And it was more men, a lot more men on the floor dead than it was standing off to the side. Um, and the first thing I, I envisioned when I first saw the, the grindstone was prep, preparation, was prepare, was the word that came to me. Um, and, of, of course, we all know that the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Um, and I knew that grabbing the sword and sharpening it um, signified us showing ourselves approved and sharpening the word, showing ourselves approved unto God. And it was also when the men would walk in front of the throne and stab themselves, signified them showing themselves approved unto God. We all want to speak to everyone. We all want to deliver this gospel and deliver this truth and deliver the word to everyone, which is what we're supposed to do. But God desires uh, for us before we can apply the word to anybody else, the first person we need to apply it to is ourselves first and foremost. Um, and a lot of these men didn't, didn't get up. And that signified the flesh not dying, the flesh, the, them not being quickened, the spirit not being quickened. And the men would stand off to the side. Those were the men who were ready and able to fight for God. And as I mentioned, they were dressed. They were ready for war. They didn't fight. This was them preparing themselves for war. They had to go through this first before they can even go out and fight. Um, but it was only a certain amount of men out of these vast amounts of men that were even able to do so. Um, and I hope that encourages everybody to apply the word to yourself. Um, flesh has to die. It has to die. God won't have it any other way. God will not have it any other way. And that's what came to my spirit um, when, I, when I received the vision. Um, and I just thank God that he, he will speak to us and give us these things so that we can all encourage one another and we can take these things to heart. And hopefully we all have a sincere heart to receive that and apply it to ourselves, which is what we're supposed to do with the word of God. So I thank God for that. Amen. As Brother James was telling me that this morning, a scripture immediately came to mind, the words of Jesus. He that loseth his life for my sake shall gain it. But he also talked about those that would try to keep their lives. If you keep your life, you're going to lose it. That's, that's a heavy word from God. Preparation. Apply the word. Self must die. And those that are willing to go through that process, God is going to quicken and empower and use them in these last days. I want to be a part of that, that few. Amen. Let us, let us continue all that's been said, what God has spoken, prophecy, tongues and interpretation, the teaching of the word, the vision. Let us take these things home today and meditate on them for the next few days, at least until we come again Wednesday night together. Let us meditate on all that has been said and let us truly cherish what God has given us. Amen. This Paul said he, he commended one in one of the epistles. He commended the people. He said, you've received the word as it is in truth, not the word of men, but the word of God. May we cherish it and treasure it as such. Amen. How many will do that? Let's take it home. Let's be doers. Not hearers only. Let's be doers of these things. Amen.